welcome to the mommy channel. I'm Cassie and this guy right here is William. <laughs> Hi. All right, as you can see, he just got a new haircut. I cut the hair. All right, so we're gonna wrap up the whole breastfeeding topic. No, eat your bread, please. And then we'll move on to uh, formula on the next video. So basically, I drew a diagram for you guys, for those visual learners. Here you have boobs, okay? And uh, the purple dots are the nipples. And then the orange coloring is your uh, areola. And that's the dark part of your skin that's attached to your nipple. So you can call it as a base, you know, the base of your breast. And then the red lines are your um, milk ducts. And the blue circles are your memory glands. So that's where you uh, produce your milk. And when you produce your milk and you start nursing, it's going to go through your um, milk ducts and then out through the nipple okay so when you are nursing you want to make sure that your child is latching on properly meaning they're not latching on your nipple because that is uh, both excruciating pain I know that for a fact and two your child's not getting sufficient milk um, because you can't massage the nipple to get the milk out you want to massage the whole breast so when you are aiming your breast to your baby's mouth, you want their Dad. mouth to be open as wide as possible as though they're young. Dad. Yeah, just like that. And you want their tongue to kind of be Dad. down and out so they uh, could have Dad. the bottom of the breast Dad. on it. And you want the nipple aimed towards the back of the tongue and more towards their uh, throat so it's easy access to take the milk. So they're like massaging the breast as they're nursing. Um, so try to aim not only nipple but also the areola, which is a dark uh, spot of your breast that's connected to your nipple. And I drew a little diagram, diagram here for you guys as well so you can see back of the tongue. You want to aim back there for the nipple. Um, you also want to make sure that your baby's lips are out uh, as though they were puffer fish like this. Or like this. Um, and then that uh, we'll show you that they're lashing on properly because if their lips are inward, they're not going to have full access to massage the breast and nurse. Um, and then if you don't get it, you know, right the first time, it's okay. It takes practice. And if your baby does latch on improperly, all you have to do is use your pinky, make sure it's washed completely clean when you handle your baby, and just put it on the inside of their cheek like this, and that will make them open their mouth. Thank you, William, for letting me do that to you while you're eating. Um, and if you find your infants having trouble or not being interested in nursing, what you can do is uh, try to drop a bit of milk, breast milk, on the tip of your nipple and then uh, try to massage their cheek like this with either your finger or your nipple to get them interested um, because that's going to get them uh, to do their rooting reflex. Um, which is basically they'll move their head side to side in search of the nipple. So that should do the trick. Um, and if not, uh, I guess just try um, maybe squirting a little bit of uh, breast milk on your finger so they can smell it. And then maybe that way they'll do the rooting reflex and open up wide and drink their milk. And then again, always uh, consult your pediatrician because um, they always know best and they can help you out in the latching on area um, and if you do find that your infant can't open his or her mouth all the way you can just gently push down on their chin as so and that will help them open their mouth like that yep and if they're still having trouble um, opening their mouth uh, one possibility is that they might be tongue-tied um, and some babies are born with their tongues a bit tethered so that basically means that the uh, frenulum so that's the extra skin on the bottom of her tongue um it's not only attached to the base of her tongue but it's all the way um to the tip of the tongue so you would um see the, the tongue kind of like glued to the floor of the mouth um and if that's the case um there is a simple procedure where the uh, doctor will just snip that extra skin 
Um, that way they have the tongue to move more freely and latch on better. But they only do it in severe cases. So if your child does have that extra skin all the way uh, to the tip of their tongue and it impedes them from um, eating properly and not gaining sufficient weight, then that's a good possibility to get that uh, fixed. But other than that, it's not that serious, it's harmless, and if your baby is able to, you know, eat on a regular basis and gain um, proper weight as they're growing, then you shouldn't be too worried. Again, always consult your pediatrician. Okay? Um, and then you're probably going to notice when you are nursing, you're going to have very tender breasts or nipples, and that's because... Your boobs are being sucked on on a daily basis. Lucky babies, they have an awesome job. Um, and it's just going to take a while for your nipples to get a bit harder. And, harder and kind of get used to being sucked on. Um, but what you can do to alleviate that discomfort is either get um, Leno, which is a cream for nipples. And it helps heal your nipples. Um, because your nipples can get cracked and even bleed sometimes. Um, mine definitely cracked. Um, so that helped a lot. And you just have, it's, it comes in a little tube. And you just squeeze a little bit, roll it on your finger, and then you just rub it on your nipple and you should be fine. If you don't want to do that, you can usually use your breast milk. Express a little bit of your breast milk after each nursing and just rub it on your nipple and you should be good to go. But, um... If you do notice that your nipples are red, the uh, possibility is that they're not latching on properly. So again, just try to make sure they're latching on properly and you shouldn't have much issues with um, your nipple. Um, and that's it on the nipples. But if you feel a burning sensation on your in your whole breast, not just your nipple, then there's a huge possibility that you might have a yeast infection or a um, clogged milk duct. Uh, and basically, that means like your duct, the little red lines I showed you on the diagram, um, just produce so much milk that's having trouble releasing that milk. So what you can do is um, you can massage your breasts. You'll probably feel like a little lump on your breasts. And all you have to do is just massage it a bit, maybe compress it with something warm, like a cloth with warm water, or just put it in the dryer, let it heat up for a couple minutes. And that should help ease that pain and help get the milk running. Um, another possibility is uh, taking a quick shower, a hot or warm shower, and that really helps you relax and it helps ease that discomfort. But if you do notice that that lump doesn't go away within a day, um, it could be something else and you should consult your pediatrician. Because um, it could be much worse. Like I said, the yeast infection and you might have to take some antibiotics um, that will help clear that out and you might have to switch to formula for a little bit because um, some antibiotics you can't uh, breastfeed your kids because it will affect their system and it will affect your milk supply so don't be surprised if your milk supply is like overflowing one time and then the next few days it's just like there's a short shortage it's completely normal so just make sure to just to keep expressing the milk so your body gets that idea of um, supply and demand um, and it's roughly a week for the antibiotics to kick in and just to clear out that uh, infection and just to get out of your um, your body. And then you can start feeding nursing again within two weeks or so. Again, consult your pediatrician because they know better than me. I'm just giving basic information here. Um, and the medical term for that yeast infection is called um, uh, mastitis. So that's the term. And it basically means a uh, infected breast or breast ducts that results in painful red swollen breasts. Um, and sometimes you might not even notice it coming up. It sneaks on nursing mothers most of the time. So you may not even know that you have it until it's like too late. And some symptoms that you get are um, an achy feeling. So if like your whole body hurts and you're like achy, like you're having the flu or something, then it's very likely that you have this yeast infection and you will need um, antibiotics. Okay, and then I talked about engorgement. So engorgement basically means that you're producing a lot of milk and your boobs cannot I hold did. that milk. So they're going to leak a bit. And it hurts, makes your boobs very tender. But again, warm compressants will help it. A warm hot shower really helps, that, um, helps 
to deal with this uh i definitely took a lot of hot showers to like zone myself into nursing because it was a painful task sometimes um and try to nurse your baby very often because the more you um empty yeah. your breast the less likely you'll yeah. have engorgement so it's completely normal but try to avoid to have engorgement on a yeah. regular basis because that's not healthy um and then always wear a supportive bra um to hold those big boobs uh, you'll feel a bit more comfortable um and if you do yeah. leak a lot you can use these little pads yeah. cotton pads for nursing mothers they help a lot i use them a lot yeah. because i was just like leaking everywhere good thing i stayed home most of the time because that would be embarrassing just having wet spots um and it's completely normal don't yeah. feel ashamed about it it happens um always carry extra clothes if you are going out somewhere um and some others might have it worse than yeah. others some others have reported like having severe leakage yeah. that they have to wrap their boobs with a towel i was not one of them but i can uh attest to the fact that it's a nuisance having leakage problems and um it's doable but over time it should get better as long as you get into a routine of feeding uh your kid and that to be it about issues with breastfeeding just remember no water for newborns because it has no nutritional value for them um you can give them give them uh like a little bit of water if they have hiccups again hiccups don't bother the kids it bothers the parents more doesn't it um so if it bugs you that much you can give them a sip of water or two and the hiccups should go away but don't give them too much water because you're just going to fill them up. They're not going to have much nutrition and they can even get ill from it. So try to avoid giving them water. Um, and some hospitals, nurses do offer water with sugar to babies who are struggling to latch on properly on the first two days after birth. So that's something you can consider. But try to work on getting your baby to latch on first and use the water and sugar as a last result. Result. Sorry, a bit tired. <laughs> so there you have it. Also, um, if you're exclusively feeding your baby's breast milk, you're probably going to get vitamin D droplets prescribed to you because we do not produce vitamin D. Babies who drink formula don't need the um, vitamin D at all all because it's already incorporated in the formula so if they're drinking at least 32 ounces a day they're good to go but if they're drinking less than that then they will need the vitamin d supplement um, another way you can give your kid vitamin d is um taking them outside and get some sunlight 15 minutes tops so make sure they have sunscreen and they're covered well because we don't want them to be exposed to too much radiation because that's not good um but yep, those are your options for vitamin D. Um, and again, consult your pediatrician because they always know better. Um, no cow's milk for newborns or infants who are under a year old um, because the milk is high concentrated in proteins and minerals that are too difficult for them to digest. So they can actually become ill and maybe um, grow allergies to certain foods. So let's not use cow's milk at all until your baby is at one, age one, sorry. Because um, that's easier for them to digest. <coughs> yeah, you dropped your bread, now you can't have it. And that is it, guys. So thank you for watching. If you like the video um, or if you like the conversation, please uh, like our video, subscribe to our channel. We love to see a lot of subscribers. <coughs> Even if you just, you know, like watching this little guy be him messy uh, self, you know, go right ahead. Love to hear your comments, um, any critiques, you know, make them constructive so I can make these videos better and whatnot. Uh, and that's it. I want to hear your experiences, ladies and gentlemen, fathers as well, you know. I want to know how you deal with parenthood at this stage and... Uh, that way I can learn more about being a parent and whatnot. All right, so I hope to hear from you guys. See you next time. Bye. Say bye. Bye.